Ooh, shiny. Come on, stupid thing. Halt, thief. Don't even think about it. Hey, what's up? It is Adrian for ProductionCrate.com. How you doing? Who are you? Hey, I'm pretty good. My name is Chris <laughs> Kelly, and I work here, too. Nice. <laughs> Dude looked familiar. Is that Nico? What? Dude, getting back to his criminal roots. I like it. Poor guy got his butt kicked. Oh, geez. It's a good thing there's always superheroes hanging out here. True. <laughs> That's a very valid <laughs> point. Protect us. Speaking of superheroes, that lasso effect was awesome. Oh, you want to know how we did it? Uh, yes, please. Well, for a basic glowing lasso effect, I think the best thing to do is to use Video Copilot Saver plugin. That sounds like the correct answer to me, but I would absolutely not recommend doing it without some kind of practical rope for reference. Otherwise, your animation is going to be all over the place. It's going to look ridiculous. Since we shot this around Christmas, we decided to use the season to our advantage. We took a string of warm white Christmas lights. These cast a bit of practical light onto our talent, and it's also going to be way easier to track than a blurry, dark-colored rope. Ho, ho, ho. To get this string of lights into a better rope shape, we set it out in the warm, lovely San Diego sunshine for a bit to soften up the wires, and that just made them loose and less, uh, you know, zigzaggy. And we also taped down each individual bulb to get them all to lie in a straight line. Now, this was not quite as tedious as it sounds, and it goes real quickly if you have a buddy. My buddy is named Nico. Speaking of things that are tedious, you're pretty much going to have to draw over this thing frame by frame. It's not so bad, but if you do want an alternative, definitely check out Cinecom's tutorial for a bit of a life hack. Unfortunately, their technique is not going to be compatible with our Christmas light method. For the part where Wonder Woman is spinning her lasso around, we had Adrian hiding off screen behind our tiny wall with some extra lights. Me? He, you look like one of the goblins. <laughs> 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 we were in a pretty bright room with lots of windows, so our practical lighting ends up being pretty subtle, but it still helps to add some believability to the shot. It's always best to combine your CG effects with your practical effects whenever possible. The tornado lasso attack <laughs> looks way more complicated than it actually is. Let's start in a brand new comp and we're going to make a black solid, but we're going to make it a square shape instead of a rectangle. Oh. Double click the ellipse tool to add a circle mask to it, and then we're going to feather out that mask and we're going to bring the mask expansion in to compensate. Now we have a blurry circle. Wow. Oh. We'll give you a moment to go ahead and scrape your jaws off the floor <laughs> and pat down those goosebumps before we add a turbulent noise effect. Let's adjust the brightness and contrast just a bit. And now we can all click the rotation value of this layer to add an expression. Just type time times 2000, and that's going to cause this layer to spin really, really fast. Uh, we just need to check on the motion blur now. And hey, now we've got the look we're going for. It was actually pretty easy. Yeah, it looks good. Blast appears to add some evolution to the noise itself so that this spinny layer isn't just a boring repeating pattern. This is actually good enough to use as is if we want to. We could drop it into a new comp with our footage and make that a 3D layer and just move it around as we see fit. But if you want to take it a step further, we can bring this into the third dimension. Whoa! We jumped into Cinema 4D real quick and modeled two shapes. One was sort of a concave cone and one was a simple hemisphere. You can download these for free if you want them. Look in the description or you can just make your own. If you dare. Whoa. If, you, if you think you can. If you think you can handle it. <laughs> Back in After Effects, we can make a new solid and we'll add Element 3D. Yeah. <laughs> and we're gonna add our spinny texture as a custom texture map. Let's also jump back into that spinny texture comp real, real quick. And we're just gonna add a black solid into the background. Otherwise, this texture is gonna look funky when we start trying to apply it to stuff. Super funk. <laughs> In Element, we can load up one of those models. Here's how we handle the texture. Start with a flat colored preset. Change the diffuse color from blue to white. Load up the custom layer as the diffuse texture. You'll need to change the texture mapping on the object itself as well. If you're using 
using our cone model, go with plain XZ, but if you're using one of your own, it might be one of the other ones. Try all the planes and just see which one is right. Process of elimination, you'll win eventually. <laughs> That's how Vegas works. <laughs> <laughs> you can change the overall blend mode of the texture itself to screen, and that will make it so you can see through it. You're also gonna need to check on draw back faces so that we can see the texture from all the angles. Back in after effects, you'll go, 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 go for it. You no, I'm one. done. Oh, cool. If you're you know, back in After Effects, you'll <laughs> want to create a group null and just animate it where you need it to go. The animation doesn't need to be that intricate. Here, this is what our render would look like if we didn't have the noise texture. It's uh, pretty janky, right? Janky AF fam. What's up, fellow kids? Next the youth. The, what's up, the youth? <laughs> Next, we're going to need a line connecting the spinny part to the talent's hand. Don't use saber for this, because if you do, you're going to get some lightsaber-esque motion blur, and this is not a lightsaber. So the basic beam effect will do. Now by default, this beam's length is going to be set to 25, which is not enough. So turn that up to 100. Why is it set to 25% by default? I think that's kind of weird. Yeah, it's weird. It does bug me. For the end that connects to the talent's hand, we can just keyframe that. If you can track it, track it. For the end that connects to the tornado part, we've got a trick for you. Alt click the ending point to add an expression and use the pick whip to select your element group null. Or if you're not using element, you can just connect it straight to your your spinning noise layer. And then after that, you're gonna wanna add period to comp and make sure that's a capital C. Okay. Open parentheses, open bracket, zero, comma, zero, comma, zero, end bracket, end parentheses, and then a semicolon to close off the expression. Beautiful. The to comp expression is a way of connecting the 2D values to 3D layers. So now our beam, which is a 2D effect, interacts with our 3D layer correctly. We can also turn up the ending thickness to fake some perspective on it if we want, which we do so we will <laughs> and we did <laughs> and we did on our second shot we just used particular to draw a line behind the tornado that was pretty easy we parented a light emitter to the control null and we had our velocity turned down to zero when our awesome tornado whip smacks nico right in his stupid <laughs> face sorry he was trying to steal our hundred thousand subscriber yeah. plaques so i'm still a little, a little pissed at him it actually hit him in the tum tum that's right got him right in his stupid tum tum <laughs> 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 Sorry, Nico. We want a burst of particles to really exaggerate that impact. There are so many clips on footage crate we could have used for this, but we kept things simple. We used a couple instances of particle burst one. We're gonna add some glow to everything that is not glowing already. Production Crate has a pretty good script for adding some pretty nice glow. It's free, it's free too. Oh yeah, it's, and free. it's free. People like free things. <laughs> yeah, I do. And then on top of that, we're gonna add some golden color. Now there's a hundred ways to add color in After Effects, but we just decided to use a tritone and then that wasn't quite working for us so we also added a curves to get a little bit extra red just in the shadows and my friends that is our effect we hope you enjoy this tutorial if you haven't already heard we have a few limited edition saturday Ooh. morning tutorials posters available these are signed by several members of the cast including professor unicorn uh, me adrian chris kelly Luca and Time Cop. All of us signed the poster. We've only made 25. And if you're hearing this tutorial, there may or may not be some left. Go ahead and email us support at productioncrate.com if you want a dope poster. Remember to make it awesome. And uh, yeah, glad we're making tutorials again. Yeah. It's cool. Hey, Sluka, I thought you were dead. Yes. Uh, uh, huh.